Good morning.
Well, welcome. We're glad you're here to worship with us this glorious day. We come here to serve the Lord. We thank you that if you were able to be here in person or able to watch on YouTube later or perhaps watching from Greencroft on Thursday, that you can experience God's presence and can be able to experience God's love in a very real and personal way. At this time, I would invite us to um, share together our morning psalm. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of us, mortals that you care for us? Yet you have made us a little lower than God and crowned us with glory and honor. You have given us dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under our care, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us go before God in our morning invocation. Inspire us today, God of unity, Lord of all, that we may rise to the occasion as stewards of the earth and all who dwell upon it and serve you by serving others, one in Jesus, one in communion with all believers, one in hope. Amen. This time we'll share together in hymn number 154. to invite the Bohannons to come forward, all four of them, if possible, at this time.
How you doing, Oliver? Good. I thought so. Welcome. It's so good to see you. We were getting ready to do this uh, back in the spring of 2020 and something called the pandemic intervened and there was lots going on and then keeping camp alive and other things. You folks have been amazing. So when I say today you are being received into this community of faith, into the Church of the Brethren, um, I'm really uh, speaking a little ex post facto. You've made yourselves part of this fellowship. Your children are part of our lives, and we're glad to get to know this one just a little bit better now. Um, we are glad that we are a true family of faith with you, and we commit ourselves to be a loving fellowship, a means of grace in your lives, and to offer opportunities for worship, study, and service. I'm very glad now to welcome you uh, officially in, and confirm something that's already happened emotionally for all of us here. Let me ask you just a couple of questions. Um, do you believe that Jesus is God's son and do you receive and trust Jesus as your Savior Amen. and Lord? Yes. yes. Amen. <sighs> do you repent of sins and brokenness, accept God's forgiveness, and pledge to live by the teachings of Jesus? Yes. Yes. And will, <laughs> and will you be loyal to the church, upholding it by your prayers and your presence, your substance, and your service? Yes. Well, we are so thankful for the commitment that you make today. May you experience forgiveness, acceptance, and peace here in our fellowship. God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to guide and empower these two, these four, enable them to walk in the newness of life using their gifts in praise to you and in service with others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Guys, good to have you here. Just want to jump over? Give a hug. Nope, not this time. How about you? Say hi. We did. Okay. No. <laughs> At camp, we. Yesterday, he was your best friend. Oh, he's my best friend yesterday. That's fine. Welcome, and God bless you. And folks, please take a moment uh, following worship to, to welcome the Bohannons as well. Now, you two can do what you want, but I'm going to invite these two to stay up for the children's story and to invite other children to come forward at this time. You can stay up, too, if you want. Whatever's comfortable. Hi there. Well, I'm starting to catch up with all of my friends here. I know that at least one of you is playing soccer. I don't know if there's anybody else playing soccer. Okay, there's one there. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. And one of the best things about playing soccer is afterwards they give you treats. Win, lose, or tie, everybody gets treats in soccer. And it's even better when we share the treats with others because then everybody is happy. Now, in church, we celebrate a special treat we call communion. A long time ago, Jesus was with his friends and he took a piece of bread that was flatter and chewier than most of the bread you eat and he broke it up and shared it with everybody. And he said, do this when you remember me. Now today, while you're in Sunday school, we're going to remember Jesus by sharing this bread. Everyone gets to take part, just like a soccer snack. Since you will be in Sunday school, I want to share a special treat with all of you. But first, let's say a prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for all you do. Thank you, Jesus, for all you share with us. We share these cookies because we remember you, amen. Now, oh. I think we've looked at the, we've looked at the package, and I'm going to hand it to you anyway. All righty. 
thank you for coming up for children's story, and it's time for Sunday school for you folks. Do we look good? Yeah. All right. I had Jenny really check. Yeah. Our scripture lesson this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 through 33, and I'll be reading from the Inclusive Bible. That's why I tell you not to worry about your livelihood. Watch your to eat or drink or use for clothing. Isn't life more than just food? Isn't the body more than just clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow or reap. They gather nothing into barns, yet our God in heaven feeds them. Aren't you more important than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add a moment to your lifespan? And why be anxious about clothing? Learn a lesson from the way the wildflowers grow. They don't work. They don't spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, not even Solomon, full splendor was arrayed like one of these. If God can clothe in such splendor the grasses of the field, which bloom today and are thrown on the fire tomorrow, Won't God do so much more for you, you who have so little faith? Stop worrying then over questions such as what are we to eat or what are we to drink or what are we to wear? Those without faith are always running after these things. God knows everything you need. Seek first God's reign and God's justice and all things will be given to you besides. I'd ask Frank for a minute um, this morning because this scripture has always been I guess my theme scripture, if you were at conference a couple years ago, you know that's what I, I spoke on. It became the theme for um, what Yvonne and I had for our wedding and, and uh, just try to keep my life focused on God. And I want to share, always keep the scripture, the scripture in my wallet and it looks like I need to replace it again, it's pretty worn. And this, this particular translation is from the message. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or might ha- not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. And that just always is spoke to me. And so as I told Frank this morning, I'm just excited to see what God's laid on your heart this morning. So go get him, Frank. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for sharing that. Eugene Peterson and the message always have a, a good insight and an accurate translation, too. So, yeah. Well... In the old Soviet Union, those of you that remember the Soviet Union, people would see a line and get in it. They would wait for hours while they inched forward without knowing what they were waiting for. They just knew that in all the stores they visited, there was nothing on the shelves anyway, and that whatever was waiting for them at the end of the line, it was bound to be better than nothing. Now... We are not experiencing Soviet-style shortages. But there's no question right now we are confronting supply chain problems. Sometimes you can't get tomato sauce. Good luck with plumbing fixtures. Rental cars can be in short supply at airports. You know, at the start of the pandemic, some of the uh, rental companies when people weren't flying anyway, sold off their fleets of cars for quick cash, figuring no problem, they'd just buy more cars later. But a shortage of computer chips means that in the past year, seven million cars were not made. And while some of us feel a level of safety and security, many do not. There's insecurity about childcare about rent, about employment, about the cost of medical care, food insecurity, and many other things real and imagined. No one has to be told, don't worry, unless we can safely assume that our lives consist of worry and that we have every reason to worry. In some cases, Constant worry. 
Which one of us hasn't woken up with a normal scratchy throat or a little bit of hay fever or a bit of a cough and wondered, oh my goodness, is this the start? So when Jesus tells us to put aside worry, shouldn't we start worrying? The thing about this text, and there's so much that I could unpack, The thing about this text is that it in no way explains away the fact that there are things worth worrying about. A lot of our worries are real. Jesus spoke to a world that was filled with insecure people, many of them having been reduced to day labor where they never knew from one day to another if there would be that denarius at the end of the day and therefore food on the table. People didn't know what tomorrow would bring. Hunger, disease, or true governmental insanity. When you had people like Herod the Great, who might slaughter the innocents, the infants, in a town simply because they wondered if a king had been born, when there was no telling what the Romans might do at any one point. Insanity was a fact of life. Now, in the Sermon on the Mount, in chapters 5 and 6 of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus makes it worse by listing the things we have to worry about. Hunger, thirst, persecution, insecurity, sorrow, brutality, poverty, and martyrdom. But Jesus challenges us to live by the laws of the kingdom, seeking first the kingdom of God and then God's righteousness, or as uh, that translation we read a moment ago reminds us, stands for the word justice. Jesus points to the birds of the air and the lilies of the field for whom life is a constant life or death struggle. The world of plants and animals though it is self-sustaining, is is just a reminder that they are engaged in life or death. Birds don't find food and they die. Animals become the prey for other animals. But it reminds us that we're part of something greater. There's something bigger going on in the backdrop. The animals live and die but against the backdrop of the world's abundance for them, they live their day in the present. I think one of the best scriptures to consider comes from the book of Job. God never tells Job where his misfortune comes from. God never puts an arm around Job and says, funny thing, you're going to love this, But me and the adversary were arguing in heaven, and the adversary was saying, you just won't be faithful if you didn't have all that ready cash. And I said, are you kidding? Job will come through. And you did. You did. We don't ever see that. When Job complains and God finally responds, God opens up Job's eyes to the larger picture of a great universe of which We are only a part. I listened to the Sunday school class speak this morning, I believe about Psalm 8 and about how there's something wonderful and magnificent going on all the time and we're a part of it in different ways at times of harvest, in times of spring, planting and harvesting and watching the birds of the air and sometimes thanks to Jim's photographs, getting a much better view of, uh, in greater detail of what they're doing and what they look like and how every feather is perfect. Sometimes we have to remind ourselves. That's one reason why in the evening I like to go out and just look up at the sky, even though most of the stars are invisible to me now because we got so many lights. I can spot the moon and Jupiter and Saturn and Venus, the different planets, and go... Looks like they're right where they should be. Even if my life isn't always right. 
great things are happening. Seeking first the kingdom of God is not a task for the idle. It's not something we retreat from the world from in order to seek the kingdom of God. It involves living bountifully in the present, turning the other cheek, serving others, lifting up others, while recognizing our own self-worth, that we matter. It's not God's faithfulness in question here, I really think. It's our own spiritual muscles. Just like exercise, it's easier to turn to God in prayer if we do it regularly. I'm going to say that again. Just like exercise, it's easier to turn to God in prayer if we do it regularly. Any one of us could sign up for a 5K without any training and finish the race. We're kind of shuffling, sort of running, walking. No problem. We get our T-shirt. But... Most people that do that don't make it a regular practice. But you walk a short distance each day. You gradually increase your your endurance. And who knows, even at our age, we might start running. Either way, we make it a regular part of our day. We can't imagine a day without stretching, without walking, without doing a few chair exercises. In the same way, people that build up their endurance in prayer, little by little each day, can condition their prayer muscles until prayer becomes like breathing. Every day they spend time in communion with God effortlessly, speaking, confessing, confiding, and rejoicing. No longer worried if I'm saying the words right in the right order, if I got my these and thous in order. We're just in constant communication with God because it's the most natural thing in the world. Now, Jesus is speaking what we call wisdom sayings in in this passage. Wisdom sayings require us to wrestle with them because they are not one size fits all. And there's there's a certain mystery he's touching on. You know, the animals are clothed in glory. You know, the birds of the air with their feathers, the coat that a newborn puppy has and how it turns into a regular dog coat over time. We humans come into this world naked and powerless, and we require care and feedings both as an infant and as seniors. Our joy and satisfaction comes from being cared for, caring for others, and caring with others. We are most thankful when we are a thankful people. That's part of seeking first the kingdom of God. Today we're going to celebrate being God's people and the kingdom of God in this time of communion. Let's celebrate while remaining fully mindful of our own fragility as well as God's love and concern for all creation. Let us live in life and in communion with God and each other. Let us seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, God's justice, while living in the world with each other and for each other. And whatever we do, let's exercise those prayer muscles a little bit every day until a life of prayer becomes as natural as breathing. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone. At this time, we'll look at our offering statement. We acknowledge with joy the offerings given throughout this past week, including today. Now let's dedicate these offerings to God's work. Let us go before God for morning prayer. These gifts which we receive in your mighty name, Lord of life, God of all, we dedicate to the work of your kingdom in this world, that we may all share in your glory now and forever. Amen.
Our prayer focus this week will be service to others, and it's exemplified in our Brethren Love Feast. We are a small denomination with a big footprint. We mustn't forget that when people ask, why the Church of the Brethren? It's because we're somebody. You know, when I'm, uh, when I'm out in ecumenical gatherings and I say I'm from the Church of the Brethren, people are really amazed and thank us for what we do. But we brethren don't know about what we do. Heifer International, CROP, Brethren Volunteer Service, which uh, inspired the Peace Corps, among other service projects, amazes other denominations and in some cases were imitated and in some cases these became ecumenical organizations so that their outreach was bigger. Now following the Second World War, various denominations gathered together around the world to form the World Council of Churches. The Brethren Prophet of Peace, M.R. Ziegler, made himself annoying enough in Elgin, Illinois by being such a prophet telling the truth, that they sent him to Europe to help found the World Council of Churches. And one time he demonstrated the feet washing service for the delegates, some of whom responded that they now understood the brethren commitment to service. At its heart, this willingness to go beyond our comfort level to serve others in the name of Jesus exemplifies what it means to be sisters and brothers in Christ. That tradition continues in many ways to this present day. So this week, let your prayer focus include service to others. Live your prayers. Service with others. Service in the name of Christ Jesus for the healing of the world. Well, we're going to live our prayer now through our time of communion. Let me get my mark here. Now, today's communion, you'll be coming forward, and our deacons will be here at the front. I'll invite them up in a moment, and you'll be taking a cup with the uh, grape juice and also a cup with the communion bread, Uh, and you'll be greeted by the deacons as well. If you are not able to walk comfortably, it's not a problem. Just raise your hand and one of them will bring communion to you. Um, And uh, grateful that we can share in this time. Because we're not able to do the full love feast right now with the meal and with the feet washing, we're going to have, once once we start communion, once we've shared our responses, uh, we're going to have some music and a revolving slideshow with some pictures of other people doing uh, the love feast, uh, contemporaries, as well as some, some drawings from the past to remind us. The music uh, that you'll hear comes from a musical that Steve Engel and I wrote about Brethren history, and uh, it includes the Love Feast song, so you'll hear that during this time as well. Now, On the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and broke it and blessed it and shared it with his disciples, saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. And in the same way, after the meal, he took a cup and he blessed it and said, this cup is the cup of my blood which is given out for all humanity. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I want to uh, remind you that we're going to be sharing in a moment the responses. You'll respond after I say it. You'll say, the bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. And in the same way, then, after I say these words, you'll say, The cup which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. And then I'll offer a prayer, and then I'll invite our deacons to come forward that are taking part in this. Sisters and brothers, the bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. 
And the cup which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. Gracious God, live in us. Holy Spirit, breathe through us. Lord Jesus, let ours be your arms, your hands, and your feet today and every day as we live the gospel, seeking first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness and justice so that all things can be added unto us. This we pray in your name, one God. Amen. I'd like to invite our deacons to come forward and, and then for us to prepare to come forward as well. Now for a benediction. As seed sown over many fields was gathered together into one loaf for the commemoration of the death and resurrection of Jesus, so may we who have been gathered together from a great distance into one body go forth in love and peace, testifying to God's great work of salvation. Amen. This time the worship team will lead us in our closing song.
My God is 